back to Wednesday's episode of YouTube.com slash Improv Gaming, the Gamescast. Every Wednesday here on YouTube.com slash Improv Gaming. Yes, I said it twice. I'm your host. it sounds for, so nice. Yeah, I'm your host for this episode, the biggest Zelda fan in the world. It's too here today for your shit feet. <laughs> no wonder everybody hates you. You're so negative. Like, all the time. Always. Yeah, I'm the biggest Zelda fan in the world. I have the tattoo of the Triforce on my right arm. Jeremy and the, the master sword in his pants. Mr. Jeremy Bird was the biggest, about that. Never. the biggest <laughs> Zelda fan in the world coming at you once again. And I'm joined by the two coolest guys in gaming. First to my far right, he only is the grumpiest man in the world and he's a douchebag. Yeah, he the, I am. Hashtag Nick's a dick. He has the best ponytail in the business. It's fabulous. Mr. Nicholas Dehays. How's it going tonight, everybody? And to my right, he is the host of the most... Mr. I'm Wondering Himself, Pete Anderson. What's going on? The fedora is back. I'm so glad to see it. Because Nick I saw my hair and he thought I was a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did you get a haircut? No. Your hair is actually straight there. Then why do you look like a pedophile? <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I don't yeah, know it's how. It's better it than it was. No, no, you, you put the hat on, you fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, right? But, gentlemen, I bring to you. How do we feel about Batman Return to Arkham getting shelved? How do you like them apples? Good. I'm a little delays little, are always a good thing. I'm a little butthurt. No, like, I think uh, shelved or delayed? Shelved. Shelved means no. It's not. It's, it's on the shelf. I thought it was delayed. Well, okay. Shelved to me is put on the shelf indefinitely. Shelved Shit to me means that, like, that's it. It's okay. over. No, 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 no. It's not chick It's not chick can. Okay. No, that's no, what no. shelved to me is. Okay, but it's basically it's, it's delayed indefinitely. Oh. So it's probably going to be coming out holiday. That sucks. That makes the most sense. Yeah, I don't care. It will come with, like, Batman VR. I don't care either way. I know you. That would be I don't I'm care. just saying... If, that, if they're saying it definitely, they're looking at Holiday, they're probably going to say, at PSX, you know, not to bring back Sony, Monday's episode, check that out. Yeah. Um, but when they talk about PlayStation uh, VR and they bring <coughs> up Batman VR, they're going to be like, oh, hey, by the way, remember that collection? It's coming out, you know, alongside Batman VR, so definitely check that, that out. That sounds good to me. I could see them doing that as an incentive. Hey, if you're reliving these Batman games, make sure you check out Batman VR. Definitely. So that's what I think on the subject. But if you didn't know, this is, a, this is the greatest video games game cast in all Mushroom Kingdom, all of Albion, and all of the incarnations of the shitty, not so shitty, that movie's going to be fucking terrible Assassin's Creed series. It's, it's going to be terrible. Yep. Maybe. It's going to be absolutely terrible. The trailer looks fucking stupid. I'll get to that later. We're three friends who talk about video games every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And every Tuesday and Thursday, we bring you special Let's Plays. We have Pete's, um, what was it, Inside? Is Inside, the Xbox One exclusive, Play Dead, the makers of Limbo, their successor. Amazing. We also bring you the biggest news in gaming via the One Up News, mostly between me and Pete. Um, Nick, unless it's Kojima, not so much. I don't care. <laughs> And every Sunday, we do to a console near you, live on blogtalkradio.com slash fillingthevoidrn, simulcast with youtube.com slash improvgaming. And, um, am I forgetting anything? Patreon? We're on Patreon, as usual. Subscribe to that. Um, and, uh... Oh, well, if they're new, they should subscribe to here. Yeah, subscribe to... And let me try it again. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, like, comment if you want, and, um, share our beautiful faces with your beautiful friends. And... Now, onto the topic at hand. Nintendo! I did that better. Nintendo! <laughs> oh, God, this is, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> well, Nintendo fanboy, why don't you start us off? Okay, I'm going to say what I said at E3. One of the press conferences, I forget which one it was, I said, I have faith in Nintendo. I believe that they're going to do well and they're going to come back stronger than ever. Haven't, the stronger than ever part hasn't come back yet, but I feel with the fact that they blew it out of the water with Breath of the Wild just... I think it's a shadow of things to come. Good things to come. I know that, like, Nick, we talked about this, that can Nintendo just ride the Zelda wave and keep its, like, not success, but keep the hype up with this can be the new thing for Nintendo, the new console, the next generation of gaming. My thoughts on that are basically, I have high hopes for Nintendo, like I said. The problem is, until I know what the NX is, I really can't make that decision. If it comes out... And it's going to be the next new console, high-def graphics. It's going to have all these great games to come out, like Mario, Zelda, Metroid, another new Star Fox, F-Zero, just all these games you want to play. And then if you get the third parties back into it, other types of games on the system, then I can say, all right, Nintendo's back in the mainstream, let's do this. 
if it's going to be this new, you have to have all your consoles on, pro, what's it called? The new processing thing? I can't remember what you said it was. Where it takes the graphics from the other systems? The upscaling? If it has upscaling, I think, I don't, I don't think that's then. I'll, I'll I think it's already got the infrastructure for it. I think, I think Nintendo's already got the infrastructure so nobody feels know. like they, they, they're being upscaled or low scaled or anything I just like don't that. think that's a good idea. Like, if that comes out, I don't know what to tell you the future is then. Um... Couple of issues with Nintendo. Uh, conversations have been had yep. in interviews during E3 and after E3 with Reggie, and it feels very reminiscent of the same type of things that he was saying about the Wii U, about the Wii U mm-hmm. before it came out. Uh, one of the questions were, you know, with the Neo coming out and with the Scorpio coming out, um, how do you feel that NX is really going to stand up against those consoles? And Reggie's reaction was, Oh, well, you know, we at Nintendo don't really think that graphics make a console. It's more about the experience of the gamer, and I think we're more in touch with the experience of the gamer than other people are, than other developers, or other console creators are. And that's exactly what they said about the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Mind you, before the Wii U came out, they weren't boasting about the graphics. This time they were. This time they were saying the hardware is going to blow everybody out of the water. The hardware is going to be mm-hmm. badass. The hardware is going to be next generation on top of its game, better than anything you've seen before. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly Scorpio comes out, Neo comes out, and they're boasting hardware. And the NX all of a sudden t- tucks its tail behind, uh, between its legs and goes, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's also about the experience, guys, and it's also about the games. So being that that's very reminiscent of what happened when the Wii U came out, with the added caveat of these guys were talking shit and then kind of got smacked into their, into their place, it seems very scary what the, what the future might hold for Nintendo. Well, the thing is, they did say, oh, we can stand up to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Maybe it can't stand up to the Scorpio and the Neo. You never know. No, I know that. But they didn't just say that it could stand up to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. They said it was going to blow them out of the water. Which I would love to see. Uh, But if the Neo and the Scorpio come out, then who gives a fuck what you blow out of the water? And the fact that you're talking, that that you're back tailing or backtracking, that's what scares me. I'm not saying that the NX isn't going to be a phenomenal console. I'm just afraid of what kind of support Nintendo is going to put behind it after they kind of got smacked in the face with something like completely out of out of the loop, you know? It, it yeah. feels like it feels like Nintendo is more in tune with the customers, but not as in tune with the industry as it should be. They may have just made their peace with that. Maybe they realize they can't be the top system anymore and they're just I don't know about that because here's Nintendo. Here are two companies that that went that were that don't talk to each other. There's no reason for them to talk to each other and came out with a mid-generation set of hardware independently. And decided that this was the time to do it with VR. And Nintendo, who doesn't talk to them either, didn't go along in that. So I feel like they're out of contact with the industry, not just yeah. with... They, they, they know what the gamer likes because they put out quality content for the gamer. But they're also... They're not putting out quality hardware for the gamer. They're putting out content... But not hardware. And I think the only r- way to be in tune with the consumer on the hardware front is to mm-hmm. keep in line with the industry and pay attention to what the industry is doing. I agree. Um, that's how I feel. Again, I don't feel like Nintendo... I feel like there's going to be another generation of Nintendo lagging behind in sales, not being able to uh, bring to fruition the promises that they upheld, saying NX is going to blow anything out of the water, it's future-proof, it's going to always be able to do better graphics because of what the infrastructure was supposed to be. It's not, it's not producing the graphics off of the system that's in your home, it's producing the graphics off of a network. Mm-hmm. And since it's doing that, it's going to be able to blow out anything as long as there's more consoles and more consoles coming out onto the network, onto the onto the the node system or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, so that's just one of my things, right? The other thing is what you had mentioned. You know, can they ride this wave of Zelda all the way until the NX comes you out? You said it, but I still <laughs> yeah. Can they ride the wave of Zelda until the NX comes out? Zelda looks fantastic. Don't get me wrong. 
All right, I love the way it looks. I love the fact that they're changing up the kind of the the elements of Zelda and turning it more into an RPG where it should be. I feel I feel Zelda is a perfect game to be an RPG type of game. Um, uh, it's 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 perfect to have those elements and to have uh, the 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 same dungeon crawler kind of aspects. Like it's just perfect for that for that open world RPG esque yeah. kind of dungeon crawler game. That's the perfect franchise for it. Uh, and I think that what they're doing is phenomenal, right? They're giving the the, the actors a voice. They're 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 giving you um, different 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 uniforms and different gear and different you know and and different abilities, right? He, he can finally jump. Who would have thought? Yeah, fucking Zelda can jump. I mean, Link can jump. It'd be fucking nice to jump over some shit once in a while. Um, he can climb. Yeah, and he yeah. can climb. So it's it's very nice to see that they're actually reinventing the way that they think about Zelda, and they're not being such a coddling mother about it. They're being like, all right, we're going to do something new with Zelda. We're not going to coddle it. We're going to set it out into the open and see what happens. Uh, but can you ride that wave? Because uh, unless you're doing that with Mario, unless you're doing that with Metroid, unless you're doing that with Kirby, Yoshi, and all your fucking characters, then it doesn't really fucking matter what you do with yeah. Zelda. So if this, is, if this is a sign of things to come for the rest of the Nintendo universe, then awesome. But if this is just a Zelda thing because you guys are like, hey... They work together, so they should be together. Then let's do that. Well, no. How about you try to make Mario into that? Well, let me just stop you right there. This is exactly what they did for the Wii. They literally... There was no Mario titles, no other major titles, and they rode the wave off Twilight Princess. They got back into the mainstream. They didn't knock anything out of the park, but they put themselves back on the map with that good console after the GameCube did do so well. I'm, I know history can repeat itself. I'm hoping it exceeds itself. Alright. Stay on the Zelda wave. Then, like, let's just say near the end, um, let's say beginning of fall, drop, just start dropping little hints, like show, like, maybe a glimpse of Mario or something. Just start, like, getting a little bit interested in these other games that you have, not just besides you're developing Zelda for the Annex. Show a couple of just other little trailers, just little hints here and there. Then we'll be okay if just, say by the end of the year, you just, it's always, it's just been Zelda all the way through. They're in trouble. Yeah, well, I want something other than Zelda, right? Yeah. Like, they tried to do it with Star Fox. Let's reinvent Star Fox and do a little bit something different. Didn't work out as well. It was yeah, a little it weird. I liked it. I it was liked a little it, strange. But... People didn't really appreciate it as much as they might have. They, they should have or they might have if there was a little quirky things that were pulled out of it. Um, so I think it's time to start actually experimenting and playing around with concepts. And don't fucking give up on Star Fox yep. because of this failure. Do something else. Yep. You know, don't give up on that franchise because Star Fox is a fucking fantastic franchise. Yep. And there's no reason to give up on it. You failed a little bit and you stumbled, but the only fucking way to, to succeed is to learn from your mistakes. So give me another Star Fox that actually can improve upon what you were trying to do in this one. You That'd a, be nice. You got a great point because um, Star Fox Adventures didn't do so well because it's not the normal game. Assault met with great praise, even though I'm not quite a fan of the game. Met with really good praise. High selling game. And then Zero, everybody's like, it's, it's different. I don't like having to do the two-screen shooter thing, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was a great game, even though it fell short. But I want Star Fox out of his ship again. Really? I want Star Fox out of his ship again. I mean, a fighter, I that one a fighter pilot is a fighter pilot. That's great. Give me an ace combat. But if you're going to do that, give me a real ace combat. You heard don't Nintendo. Give me, give don't us... give me a, a, a track shooter. Don't give me a, a, a rail shooter. I don't need a rail shooter. All right, give me some. Give me what you can do with Star Fox. It's fucking No Man's Sky coming out. I know you can do better with Star Fox. Nice. You know, Star Trek is coming out for VR. I know you can do better with Star Fox. Halo has been out for years. I know you can do better, better with, with Star, Star Fox. Fox. Call of Duty just went into space. I know you motherfuckers can do better with Star Fox. I love it when you get this. <laughs> but like, like that. That's my thing. Like like. There are so many opportunities out there for you to pursue, and all you keep on giving me is a rail shooter. That's, That's it. That's it. There, there's no... It's the same fucking thing as a point and click. Star Fox has evolved past a rail shooter. It has to. Your concept was a limitation of the technology available to you. That's why it worked. Now... Take away those limitations and let him spread his fucking wings and fucking fly. Hopefully into the stars. Let, let me let me <laughs> let me give you a let me give you a quick scenario to start off. Just say they come up with another Star Fox game on edX. Say it starts up and you start on the normal planet like you usually do, and then say you save the world, and then as soon as you go like off the planet, you go after Andros as usual. All of a sudden, just say some random like anomaly comes in front of you, and then poof, 
Star Fox ends up in another place on the universe, and it's like, all right, let's look around and see what we got here. Like, you don't know where you are. Would you get behind that? No, because Damn it. if it's a, it, it can't just be a conception of a story. It has to be the gameplay elements as well. So saying, oh, you're doing the same thing you're always doing, no, no, but no, the I'm story saying, I'm saying give them exploratory abilities, not just no. Real. But you can explore the universe that Star Fox is already in. Okay. You don't need to. You don't need to go that far. Create a whole universe that's based off of Star Fox and that one solar system, and build up onto a new universe. So you want to explore- fucking make that the Andromeda universe, and Star Fox can come fuck with humans in the Milky Way. Do something, something different. But it'd be nice to see something that's not a rail shooter. Anything that's not a rail shooter. That's just what I want out of them from Star Fox. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah. It just it. Giving me a spaceship and telling me I can only stay on this path is counterintuitive to the fact that I have a fucking spaceship. It's like giving me a teleporter, but I can only teleport there. Why? It's a fucking teleporter. I should be able to go wherever the fuck I want to. That's kind of how it happened on Power Rangers. It should be how it happens now. Like, that's just the way that I feel about it. Like, I should be able to teleport wherever the fuck I want to. You gave me a teleporter. So why wouldn't I be able to fucking go wherever the fuck I want to? So if you're giving me a spaceship, which gives me license to travel the universe, why would you not give me a universe to travel? That's a lot of fucking F-bombs. In one <laughs> I like what you're saying. I agree. That's how I feel. I mean, but, but you have to take that same... You have to cut the umbilical cord like you did with Link and like you did with Zelda and allow that free reign to travel the fucking... The, the, the mythos that you've created... Explore and Hyrule explore, for the first time ever. And explore it. You have to take off those reins and allow Star Fox to do the same thing. Allow Metroid to do the same thing. Allow Mario to do the same thing. To explore the mythos that you've created. You have... Uh, and nobody's going to say that Nintendo doesn't already have a vibrant and extensive mythos or, or mythology behind every single one of its titles. You have it there, so you can create a fucking a Witcher 3. You can create a fucking Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain. You can create these type of games and you can do very well with them because the the the, the mythology and the and the character basis are all there. Every every single character you have has a vast amount of characters that you can draw upon. From Star Fox's father to to to, to Fa Falco's fa father, uh, like they, they they all have this huge mythos and you can draw upon a huge amount of information in order to create a universe that I want to spend time in. Nice. Like Star Fox. Or a world that I want to spend time in. Like fucking, uh, where's Mario's things going? Mushroom Kingdom? Mushroom Kingdom. Let me, let me say, what is the most popular Super Mario game of all time? I don't know. What? Super Mario World. And where does it take place? Dinosaur World. So like it takes place out of the mushroom kingdom yeah. for once. So come on, Nintendo, think about that. You, you, this man's giving you gold. You don't even use it. To, you don't even have to fucking think about that. Just fucking you can stay within some confines that you're comfortable with. But at the same time, like just allow us to explore these worlds. You know the reason why uh, Mario sixty four was so so successful was because it gave us the false sense of exploring this world. That's why it worked so well. And then they fucking completely forgot that that worked. Yeah, they tried to rehash it in um, Sunshine, and Sunshine just, you yeah. know, it's tropical levels every single world. They completely fucking forgot why it was that Mario worked so well. It was because you get a little bit of every universe in a 3D environment. Every aspect of Mario you get in this 3D environment now. So, like, they let you explore all of that shit. Underwater worlds, they let you explore platforming worlds, they let you explore lava worlds, they let you explore underground. Like, they let you explore all that shit. Finally be a part of this fucking, like, this huge, this huge universe you've created. Pete hasn't said a single I word. I know, but... <laughs> I, I think he I loves it. I, I like where you're going with I this. I think man. he likes when I get like this, too. I mean, I, I mean, you can call me a douchebag or a dick all you want to. I think I have a very good point about what Nintendo You have a lot of good doing. points. I think I do. I think, I think that Nintendo should hire me. I'm just saying. Not before I'm <laughs> So what are your thoughts, Pete? If you're a Nintendo fan, I recommend shutting off this video right now <laughs> because I'm about to bury them. <laughs> Expectation about Nintendo. Number one, if your NX system is not more powerful than the current Xbox One and PlayStation 4, then you need to fucking rethink your things. 
because you need to have a stronger system. You're coming out three years after the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, the original two systems that started this console generation. If Nintendo, if you do not have anything stronger than that, you got problems. Number two, my expectations for them is, can they ride the Zelda? Yes, because of what you said. It is something different from Zelda. I said the first thing to him when we watched this reaction trailer, which you can find on the channel, is I said, wait, was that Zelda talking? Was that, is there a voice dialogue? Oh my God, Link can jump? Oh my God, he can climb? Oh my God, you, if you use a weapon, it decreases over time? Look at this big world. Look at everything that's going on. Oh, we're going into the snow. We have to change clothes. That was the most talked about game at E3 because it looked and it was something different and it was something nobody expected. Kudos to Nintendo on that for saying, no, we're going to show one game and it's going to be Zelda. You know why? Because you're going to want to see the Zelda game. Yes, you have your Pokemon, you have all these other games, but you're here to see Zelda. And when the treehouse began and they showed that trailer and then we're like, we'll come back to Zelda. You were just like, all right, I want to see more. That trailer, it made me interested. Show me yep. gameplay. And to see this gameplay in this huge world and where you can climb and trying to pinpoint everything, watching the trailer going, where's this, where's this, where's this? Absolutely fantastic. Something that you need to check out. But Nintendo has to fucking get off their high horse. When Reggie was saying, you know, oh, you know, we're here because of, we're here for the gamers, it doesn't matter about graphics. Graphics, to many people, don't matter. But to a core audience, graphics matter. They want the newest and prettiest thing. You're not going to... You have a kid play not a classic Mario game, but if you have them play something that's a little bit more dated and old, that's not as distinguished, you're looking at something like play a Call of Duty, the first Call of Duty on PC, and then compare it to Infinite Warfare. Completely drastically different. And people are going to want to play this Call of Duty Infinite Warfare because the gameplay has been restructured. The game, the game looks great. It's a story. It's all this stuff, you know. Is the first Call of Duty a masterpiece? Of course it is. It is one of my favorite games. But you have to also look at this, Nintendo. You have to be able to know that your console is coming out three years later. Even if you can't beat the PlayStation Neo, even if you can't beat the Scorpio, yep. you want to be able to at least be on a similar level. You don't want it to look cartoonish like the Wii U. I use my Wii U for the simple fact of the first party. And yes... Nintendo, use your first party, bring back Smash, launch with Mario Kart. But me and Nick have had this discussion on the channel before. You need the support from your third party developers. Without the support of the third parties, it doesn't matter. Because when a big game like Call of Duty comes out where everybody wants to play multiplayer, that's the game. What are you getting it for? Xbox, PlayStation. You never hear, oh, you're getting it for Nintendo? Oh boy, let's do the voice chat. Which is something you have to work on, Nintendo. Yes, you have kids. A uh, kid base, I get that, but you have to have voice chat in your games. You have to have a mic. You have to be more in the multiplayer space because that is where gaming is and where it is going. Everybody wants to go on and shoot their fucking friends in the face. <laughs> I was on last night playing on my PlayStation with my buddy, and we went from NHL to FIFA to Rainbow Six Siege to Uncharted multiplayer. We did all these different things, talking to all these different people, you know, and then. We were like, oh, let's do Smash Brothers Online. All right, let me call you so we can talk. That's not how it should be. You need to have something where it engages. Bring over the core. Bring something you live. You should get Ventrilo. Ventrilo? Ventrilo. It's an it's a online chat thing that you guys can use. It's fucking free. But, you know, that's how me and my buddies play video games whenever we play anything else. There you go. Well, I'm just saying. For, <laughs> I didn't know about it at the time. <laughs> what I'm saying is... um. They need to adopt this third party relationships, you know, because without them, it's not going to do anything for them. That's what they've been saying is that with the NX coming out, they're hoping to rebranch out and get more third parties onto that system. See, but I'm starting to reconsider whether or not they really need to do that. Like, I, I think they need to cut the cord between them and their franchise. They, the, their franchises. I mean, they have millions of dollars sitting underneath their, underneath their underneath their asses and they're just sitting on it they're just sitting on it not their doing anything problem. with it they're, they're just like oh we're too afraid to branch out and do something new and different well fucking gaming has changed dude yep your fucking fan base is 35 years old on average yep who are now playing Call of Duties and yeah, Battlefield those and are the people that fucking kids don't give a shit about you 
They don't. They fucking get over you by the time they hit kindergarten because now they have friends and Facebook and a fucking telephone and fucking... They, they, they don't give a shit about you anymore. They don't care. We're the ones that are still here playing video games. These people are out there fucking going out to get Molly and fucking listen to shitty rap songs. Like, <laughs> they, don't, they don't give a shit. They don't care. They're, 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 there's too much information bombarding these it's, children nowadays for them to stay attached to Nintendo like we you see. Yeah. You see these commercials from Call of Duty. And then your 12-year-old kid going, Mom, I want the new Call of Duty game, you know? So why are you going to get it for a system that is not going to have it on? The only time... What blows my mind is the only time Nintendo actually had a Call of Duty game... The finest hour on the Wii, I remember. And they had Black Ops on the Wii U. Oh, jeez. How'd that go? I don't know. I want to look it up real quick. (laughs) But, like... And number one, you gotta fix that fucking controller. Make a fucking real controller. That's another thing. Yeah, that'd be but nice. that's a sidebar. A real controller would be nice. Yeah. But a real controller for <laughs> once <laughs> would be nice. But you know, stop trying to re in. Stop trying to fucking reinvent the controller. Yeah. Because every single time they come out with the controller, they try to reinvent it. Right. First they had a square brick. Then they had a curvy brick. Then they had a fucking three sticks. I don't even understand how they, <laughs> there's, there's three sticks on a fucking controller. There's only two hands. Which controller? The N sixty four. It's three sticks. No, it's not. Okay. The D pad, the D pad, the analog, and the C. There's three sticks that come down off of it. That's not an actual stick, you There's three sticks. There's three sticks. There's three sticks on the controller. If you look at it, it doesn't look like there's just one stick. There's three sticks. You're talking about the thumbstick? No, I'm not talking about the analog stick. I'm talking about three sticks poking out of it. Oh, that's what you're talking about. There's a brick, there's a curvy brick, and then three sticks. At what point am I talking about an analog stick? Um, so when you say sticks, I think about the free. No, there's three sticks coming down. Yeah, that's a stick to me. No, that's an analog stick. That's, that's a control that's, stick. That, that's a stick. Um, and then you had fucking I don't even understand the nunchuck the and the Wemo. No, before that, I the don't Game even Cube. understand the GameCube. Oh, controller. I love the GameCube. I know you love it. I just don't. I just don't understand it. Like when I saw it, I was like, "How the fuck does somebody think of this?" <laughs> like I was like, "What the fuck is this thing?" Right? I was like, "Holy shit!" And then and then you had the the Wii the Wii the Wii Chuck. The nunchuck and, nunchuck the, and um, the Wiimote, and then the fucking, uh, the, the portable fucking the, iPad. The Wii pad. <laughs> the, the, the Wii pad. That can go 30 feet without just <laughs> The Wii pad that, like, is completely useless. Like, if you're gonna give me a tablet, at least make it a tablet. I want Nintendo, and we'll end on this, is... I think Nintendo, what they should do, and they probably won't, because it's Nintendo, is to hold a press conference or an event to show off the NX, show off this is why you should pay attention. Here's a controller that makes sense, quote unquote. Here is the new Call of Duty running on the NX. That if you get it, you will have all the DLC. You know, something to make it worth it. Like if you buy this copy, you'll get all the DLC right away. You know, yeah. if you, you know, oh, don't forget we do have our Zelda, we have our Mario, we have our Smash Brothers. But if you, hey, you see this Resident Evil game? Yeah, it's on the NX as well. And you get um, the remake of Final Fantasy. Uh, they're gonna uh, fail Fantasy miserably. 4. This is this is why I think that they're gonna fail miserably is because they will test the waters with a franchise, and, and a third party franchise, and it won't do well, and they'll give up on the concept yep. entirely. Yep. that's what's gonna happen with Nintendo because that's how they are. They that's how they always have been. It's like oh we'll test it out, and then they do it, and it doesn't do well because your system is not capable of handling it. Or whatever the case may be, nobody's thinking about your system when they think about that game, like yeah. Call of Duty. They Black have to Ops. have a better online community. What could Xbox... I don't think they need a better online community. Yeah, but I don't think they. But need look a better at how community. easy it is for PlayStation and Xbox to go into parties, go yeah, in with five of your friends and be like, right. I don't think they need. I think they need to focus on content of the games because that's going to sell the consoles. I think they need to focus on better content. I think their content is lacking. Mario Party is the only game where I can play multiplayer, or the only fucking game that's not a standard fucking Nintendo game that I can play multiplayer on. The new one sucked. I but mean. now it's a standard fucking Nintendo game, so that's not even different enough anymore. Alright, last thing, and then, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts about the cartridge? That they're patenting now cartridges and disc. I'm interested. Everybody already has cartridges. We just picked up our PSP, our PS Vitas, they have cartridges. Cartridges are the way of the future. Again? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because CDs are dying. That's the thing. Discs are dying. Here's the thing, right? I take this back to GameStop, right? Nintendo could work out a deal with GameStop. We'll buy all your stuff and then we fucking purpose them. You can do that with these. 
You can definitely do that with those without a problem, without putting a, a lock on everything. So we can repurpose them. So it's it's just a mutually beneficial. They need to actually look into stuff like that. Um, saving money by fucking buying back the cartridges and repurposing the cartridges for new games and new titles. Um, but the, the, the cartridge, it, it, solid state drives are far superior to the rest of the environment out there right now. Optical discs... Uh, hard disks, they just they just suck in comparison to solid state drives. And the reason being that there was a huge boom in technology for these solid state drives. And that's what a cartridge is. A cartridge is a, sol a solid state, state drive. And that's why you're seeing bigger and bigger memory cards, like 128 gigabytes of memory in a little fucking mini SD card for your cell phone. Is because they can hold a higher amount of information than anything that's out there. A Blu-ray player, can't, a Blu-ray disc can't even hold the same amount of information as as these mini SD cards can. Yeah. I think a Blu-ray disc maxes out at like seventy-two gigabytes. I believe if I'm wrong, if I, if I'm wrong, then don't quote me. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm pretty sure seventy-two gigabytes is the max for a Blu-ray disc. I've got a little thing this small. This small, I can lose 128 gigabytes accidentally by vacuuming it. <laughs> there's, there's no reason why solid state drive shouldn't be the wave of the future, especially as they become cheaper and cheaper. I like it. So, what are your thoughts on Nintendo? Are they in the right path? Are they gonna on the wrong path? What are your thoughts? Can they ride the wave of Zelda all the way to the NX, or do they need more? Let us know in the comments below. For all things gaming, you know, was that say you? Yeah, he can't write in English either, so it doesn't matter. For all things gaming, you know where to keep it. And as usual, guys, <laughs> game, game on. on. For everything gaming, you know where to keep it. I like that. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> are you waiting for my approval? No. The <laughs> cookies are on top of the fridge. <laughs> I'm going to try a couple of different...